What's up everybody? Welcome to another video in the series and in this one we'll be solving the next problem. And today the problem that we're solving is called birthday cake candles. Okay, so let's check it out. You are in charge of the cake for your niece's birthday and have decided the cake will have one candle for each year of her total age. When she blows out the candles, she will only be able to blow out the tallest ones. Your task is to find out how many candles she can successfully blow out. Okay. So for example, if your niece is turning four years old and the cake will have four candles of height 4413, she will be able to blow out two candles successfully since the tallest candles are of height four and there are two such candles. Okay, Okay, this sounds easy. So uh, let's say that your niece is turning 10 years old and you have 10 candles. So you just need to find uh, the maximum height of the candle, you know, and then you can just find out how many uh, candles exist in the range in the list with the with the same height with the height equal to the maximum height and then you just have to count that number and then you can simply print it out okay easy so n is from 1 to 10 power 5 <laughs> that does not really make logical sense because well uh, you know the number of candles on the cake are equal to the age, meaning if the value of n goes to 10 power 5, meaning that your niece is 10 100,000 years old. Okay, <laughs> so, well, we don't really need to worry about that. This is just a problem, and, you know, this is just an example. But anyway, it's funny. Sample input 4, 3, 2, 1, 3. So you have, okay, so in the first line, you would have number of candles or the age, but you only need to worry about the number of candles. And then, um, okay. So then you have uh, to find the maximum one, the maximum height of the candle, which is 3 here. And then since we have two candles that are of height 3, we have to print 2. Okay, easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all the code that's written here, the boilerplate code. Okay, now let's start coding. Hmm. So in the first line, we would have to take uh, the number of candles, right? So we would do, let's, uh, let's just do it N. Because we might not we, we might not even need it okay and then we need to do we need to input a list so we would have to say map int input dot split okay and then let's convert it into a list okay and then we'll say candles maybe okay so now what we can do if we want to use the built-in functions it would be really easy and it would probably take like two lines to solve the problem but let's do something more basic now. I'm feeling I'm feeling adventurous today. Let's do max equals zero. So this is the variable in which we would be storing the maximum height of the candle. So we would be we would have to go through the entire list. So we would say for a candle in range candles, and then we'll say um, okay. We'll say if max is less than candles let's just do it i actually because we're not really iterating because this is just an index so yeah if max is less than candles i meaning that if uh, max if this value is less than any of the height of the candles then we can simply store that value in the max variable because this variable has to store the maximum height right so we'll do candles i Okay, so now uh, once we are done through this loop, we would have the maximum height, right? So after that, you can go through another loop. You can just say for i in range, oops, for i in range, candles, and if candles i equals to max, can simply do something like count plus equals one so you would have to initialize count with zero and in the end you can simply print count so what's happening here essentially is in the first line you're just taking the, the number of candles that would be there in the second line you're taking the list as a as an input so for example let's say that we are taking uh, three three one and two so these are the heights of the candles you are initializing a variable max with zero and a count with zero. Then you're 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 iterating through the list, and then you're finding the maximum value. So uh, after after going over the list, we would have the value three uh, assigned to the variable max.
because this is the maximum value that exists in the list. After that, we would go through the list again, and then we'll see how many elements are there in this list which are equal to the value of max. So, and, and, and every time we encounter a value that's equal to the maximum value, we simply increment the counter, count. And then in the end, we simply print out count, which is the number of candles that your niece can blow out when she blows. Okay, so let's do run, and it should work. It's not working. List object cannot be interpreted as an integer. Line 7, let's see. Line 7. Oh, right, instead of candles, I need to do the length of candles. Mm, stupid mistake. Length. Okay, that should work now. Let's see. Okay, so that's working. If we submit... So, just case 7, taking a lot of time, fingers crossed. Okay, it's working. Okay, so we got it. That was easy. Congrats. Okay, where is the congrats? There. Okay, but there is another way to do it. And then now, uh, that was the most basic approach. Uh, now we'll try to do it another way. So, well, if you're, you, if you're uh, happy enough with this solution, you can just move on. But if you want to learn another technique, then you can just... Stick around and see for uh, see uh, other ways of solving this problem. So let's see. Okay, so I don't think we need to use this loop. Count equals to zero, right? So what we can do is we can just uh, write an if statement here. We can say if candles i double equal to max. Oops. Come on. Okay max and count plus is equal to one okay now this is not going to work because you see let's say that uh, in the list we have three three one and four now what would happen we go through the list we are seeing that if max and max is initialized with a uh, with a value of zero so is zero less than three yes it is so max would have value of three now and then after coming coming out of this uh, of this loop we would check if the value the candles i and we are at three right now is equal to max which is three also so since it is equal to three we would increment count by one right then we'll go uh, we'll go over the list again i mean we'll go when we go over the list we would be accessing the second element and is max less than three no it's not so it wouldn't go into this one but it's still equal to candles i, so count would be incremented by 1 again. Now when we go over again, it's 1, and max is not less than 1, so it wouldn't do anything. Also, 3 is not equal to 1. I mean, 1 is not equal to 3, so it, we wouldn't increment the counter either. But after that, we, we encounter the value 4, right? And 4, uh, the max uh, variable has value 3 stored in it. So 3 is less than 4, right? So then we would have to reassign. Um, uh, so then uh, we would store the value 4 into max. But then when we check this, we can see that the count would be incremented by 1 again because candles i, which is 4, is equal to max, which is the new max, actually. So the thing is, what we need to do, whenever we update the value of max, we need to set the counter to 0 again, right? That means when uh, we encounter a new maximum value, which is 4 in this case, we would assign value of 4 in the max variable, and also, simultaneously, we would assign the value of 0 in the count, meaning that count would start from 0. So, because we only need to find the number of uh, tallest or the, I guess, the longest candles, right? So, or the tallest candles, the tallest more appropriate. So, and then you can simply increment every time you see the same value. So, if you have 4 again, 4 again, and 4 again, then you can just keep, in, keep incrementing that value. But if you have 5 after that, then you can simply set count equals to 0 again, and then it would only be incremented by 1 because you only have 1 5. That should give you the right answer. So let's check it out. So I'm going to submit and see if it works. I hope it does. So two test cases are still going. Let's see. Perfect. So that one's working too. So 
that made it a bit easier, right? So instead of two loops, you are using just one loop. Also, instead of all of this, you can just, what you can do is you can simply do max equals max, which you can call the max function, and you can find the maximum value in the candles list. And then simply, instead of printing count, you can do candles dot count, and here you can simply say max. And if you submit that, that should work as well. That's also working. See? Perfect. Uh, if you want to make it even more short, well, you don't need to. This is this code is pretty good. But then you don't even have to store it anywhere. So you can simply, you know, replace max with that. And then if you submit, that should work as well. So that's also working. So that's just three lines of code and we got the answer right. But I went through the longer approach because you need to understand the basics. But if you're a seasoned programmer, then this is probably the approach that you would use for solving this kind of problem because it's it's faster, right? So anyway, if you have any doubts, put them down in the comments below and I would be happy to help you. And for the next problem, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.